What's your story about having insane romantic chemistry with someone? Our first kiss was so intense it scared me and I didn't see or talk to him for a month out of fear I would fall in love. Later on I text him out of boredom and it just happened to be the day he planned to take his own life. When he told me I went straight to his hoys and talked him down. We spent hours talking and holding each other and I never felt so at home. A few weeks later we were walking in a park he was walking in front of me and turns around to look at me and it was just surreal I got this euphoric feeling like I was high and I had to catch my breath. He laughed at me and said I think I just saw you fall in love with me. We've been together 2 years. I'm still just as in love as I was that day in the park but it didn't take long for me to realize those feelings have never been reciprocated and never will be. From literally the first message he sent me on a cupid I knew that we had a once in a lifetime connection. Our first date wasn't the best, slightly awkward, but our second. We people watched on the boardwalk, drank liquor out of gas station soda cups, talk non-stop for literally hours. We had this sexual vibe that's indescribable. It was like we already knew each other inside and out from our first time together. We were exactly in sync. All the same kinks in perfect complement to each other. Three weeks after our first date we exchanged I love yous. I know how insane that sounds but I swear to god no love has ever felt more real. We'd already had sex twice that night. The first was kinky, toys and BDSM. The second was intense but slow. I'd had some bad news that day and was feeling down. And he asked me to talk to him about it. We opened up to each other and shared things we'd never told anyone else. We were holding each other after bearing our souls and I said it without thinking. He didn't know if he misheard me so he asked me to repeat it. And I was freaked out so I wouldn't. He said if you just said what I think you said, I feel it too. I know how crazy it is but I'm in love with you. We were both orgasmed out from the two sessions earlier but after he said that it was like we were magnetized. We made love in the most literal way imaginable. He was inside of me body and soul. We fricked for the sole purpose of being as close to each other as possible. I cried from the intensity of it all. It was overwhelming. We were together for 6 months. When we met he'd already had plans set it stone to move back to his home state when his lease was done. And neither of us could do long distance. So it ended. He taught me who I was. He saw me as a valuable, worthwhile person worthy of love and he forced me to see that too. Two years later I'm living the life I always wanted. Happier than I've ever been and mentally well. Because he was the first to ever believe in me like that. His faith in me changed me fundamentally. He is and always will be the love of my life. Got a little sad at the end when you guys split. We were friends and co-workers online. We eventually met at an extended holiday weekend gathering of about a dozen of us. When it was over and I was heading out the door. I was so sad to think that I would never see her again, as she lived in Idaho and I lived in Maryland at the time. When I talked about that weekend afterwards, it generally went, yeah it was great, I met, blah blah people, but, she, was brilliant and witty and insightful and interesting, and it's a good thing she's a girl, or somebody might think I had a crush on her. We figured out that it was actual sexual chemical love attraction on her next trip out east. We were each other's first experience with a lady. A year later, I moved to Oregon to be with her. Her temperament, desires, kinks, attitudes, everything, meshed perfectly with mine. It often boggled my mind that not only did she allow me to do that thing to her, but she wanted me to. And the things I craved for her to do to me weren't chores, but were some of her greatest joys. Day by day, year by year, it only got better. My heart leaps with joy to see her smile. It makes me giddy to hear her growl, you thrill me, in my ear, when she winks at me, it brings me back to that day in the airport, the second time we said goodbye, and with that wink I knew it would be alright, I knew it wouldn't be goodbye forever, that was over 20 years ago, we were finally able to be married 4 years ago, the sex is fantastic, she is still the puzzle piece of my heart and spirit, and my favorite human in the world, I love that last sentence first girlfriend in high school. She had got out of a relationship with someone a few months back. We did some making out and such but nothing too extreme. She was hesitant and I was fine with it. I was just happy to be with her. Later on she finally tells me she was sexually assaulted by her ex. 
It made sense why she was hesitant and had trust issues. I made a promise then and there I would never push her to do anything she didn't want. Later on down the road we were fooling around and my hand traveled up her legs a bit. I could feel her take a deep breath and brace. I asked her if she was okay with this. She hesitated but didn't say anything. I said I can tell from how you're acting you're not ready. I understand and pulled away and told her it was okay. She had tears swelling in her eyes. But it wasn't tears of fear because she had the most genuine smile on her face and she just hugged me and told me she loved me for the first time. I don't know if this is necessarily romantic but it's probably my most influential moment with a loved one. You're a true good lad man. Wanted to let you know it was me who upvoted. First time I saw her, I stared in her eyes and she in mine. Instant attraction. Total love. Love's too weak a word. Maybe the Germans have a better word. Paid the fee. Put a collar and leash on her and took her home. Best dog ever. Paid the fee. Put a collar and leash on her and took her home. Still thought it was a woman at this point. I basically threw my career away because of how attracted I was to my ex. She lived in a different state when we first met. After we hit it off I invited her to spend a week with me in NY. And it was like, I'm not a drug guy, but it's what I imagined trying crack or H for the first time was like. I could not get enough of her. We saw each other a few times more over that summer. And then I just moved her in because I couldn't take the separation. After that, my life went downhill. I couldn't focus at work because all I could think about was getting back home to her. I'd take days off at a time just to spend with her. I should add that I wasn't working a blow off retail job or anything like that. I was a senior associate at an international law firm. Anyway, it didn't take a lot of this for me to lose my job. And then things cascaded. I found other work, but the same problem arose. So eventually I could only commit to contractual work. This caused money problems which caused relationship problems. Things got pretty bad between us, but she wouldn't leave because she likes living in NYC rent free, and I couldn't commit to breaking up because I was so, I mean, addicted sounds dumb but that's exactly what I was. She was my drug and I was a hapless junkie. After a 3 years of this she decided she'd had enough of New York and moved back home without any warning or further communication. And I bottomed out. To continue the drugs analogy, imagine a H addict who didn't want to quit, but just can't get H anymore. It took me another year to move on and finally start to put my life back to some semblance of what it was before. Now my career is back on track and I'm happily engaged to a great woman. And that period of my life is just a dark memory. But there's a part of me that wonders. If she knocked on my door right now. Whether I'd be able to resist her. Last year. Just before the Christmas party I was going to quit my job to focus on school. But a couple of friends convinced me of going anyway. At the party they introduced me to the girl who was going to replace me. I should mention that I'm very introverted. So for me having chemistry with someone from the start is very rare. But with this girl everything was different. We had great banter. We had a lot of similar interests. She was very funny and pretty cute too. We danced all night. By the end of the party I could tell she wanted me to kiss her. The romantic tension with this girl was unreal. Movie like. But truth be told. I have girlfriend and I love her. Romantic tension is fun. But it's not something I would trade for what I have with my girlfriend. So nothing happened. But it was a fun night. I feel like a lot of people don't have that filter of short term romantic and long term romantic which leads to cheating. You are a good person for having some self control. Every day is amazing for my wife and me. We get along so well in every aspect. Romantically. Fies get better every time as well. Recently we've been connecting our usual rate multiplied by 10. I'm very lucky. The thighs in my marriage improve every time too. Thank you pie you know. We were both dragged to a red lobster for a birthday party that neither of us wanted to go to. He was wearing a My Little Pony shirt and sat across the table from me. Every time someone said something dumb, I would look over at him, and he'd be looking at me, and we'd just sort of lose it. People kept asking why the two of us were laughing or if we had met before. We could not stop talking to each other. The truth is, there's no stronger bond than mutual misery. Fast forward about 5 years later, this dude is my husband, and we're freaking inseparable. Also, sex is good. 
I met my fiance at work where we spent a good hour and a half talking. I didn't charge him for my time and we exchanged numbers. After I awkwardly made my way through our first date, we went drinking for our second date and the rest is history. And by history I mean, coffee every morning after he was off work. He worked graveyards, and before I went to work, spending nights at each other's places, even though he is allergic to my cats which I had just got. Then, six months in, we moved in together. We've only been together for a year but we feel as if we've spent lifetimes together. I think the best part is that we can be playful together and childish but we discuss problems like adults as soon as they come up. We often joke about the things that ended my last relationship, cheating, lying, using me for my money, and there is so much trust between us that I knew this was the man I'm spending the rest of my life with. The bonus was that my parents love him and his mom has taken me on as a second daughter. She's much better than my parents though so we play favorites and see her twice a month even though she lives three times farther from us than my parents do. So this is going to sound cliche as frick but I met her in a poetry class. She was this tall, dark featured, beautiful young woman who was quick witted and well spoken. She had a unique taste for music and the ability to pull wonderful moments out of thin air. I initially tried to woo her just by inviting her to hang out and we'd talk about poetry for class and I felt like I was given the opportunity to hold the sun in my hands. But the story kinda takes a sad turn because the night before our first official date, I was date raped by a girl who I lived near while we were at a neighbor's party. Anyway, that led to a lot of confusion on my part and a sort of apprehension to do anything too sexual. But that worked out actually because the girl I liked was a practicing Christian who told me that she wasn't necessarily saving herself for marriage but she was saving herself for someone really special. Welp, that made it easy for me because I was in a weird headspace about sex and she didn't want to have it so our time was entirely dedicated to talking, listening to music, drawing, writing, hiking, and making out and fooling around a little. It was beautiful. I don't think she was the love of my life but she was the exact person I needed to love me at that time and she did and I healed as a person because of it. I ended up writing a poem about our relationship and it's probably the best thing I have ever written. So you just not gonna post the poem then. We just couldn't stay away from each other. It was magnetic. Kissing him made me forget about time and space and I couldn't tell where my face ended and his began. It was a short, but intense thing and we're better off without each other, but it's nice to think back on. Sounds familiar lol. Worth it. But me and her are better off apart. I had insane chemistry with my band director. I was always attracted to him and would come to his office to flirt. I waited until I was 18 for the first time we hooked up. It started with pure physical chemistry and lust between us. It was only supposed to be a one time secret between us. Turns out that was just the first time. We couldn't keep our hands off each other. It started off with just physical chemistry but soon because apparent that we there was some kind of emotional connection. We were like magnets. Three months after we hooked up that first time we had fallen in love and were living together. We've been married now for almost 12 years. Honestly, we were both able to bring each other to orgasm every time. Nothing really crazy or kinky. And then BSP. That's all I want. I haven't had something like that since. She was my first long term GF and my first hookup of any kind. Definitely a case of you don't know what you've got until it's gone. My wife can come in like 30 seconds when she is on top. So I just need to stay hard for that extra 15 seconds. Then we're both good. It, women, kissing him made me forget time and space and it felt like a supernova exploding in my brain and I had never felt so loved. Men, well she liked to suck dong. And I just so happened to have one. Lucky guy, with a penis and everything. When she turned out to be as much of a nympho as me, plus her ability to genuinely see him every 30 seconds. Overall just really compatible as people and dirty sex. I love it. Comma her ability to genuinely see him every 30 seconds. These kinds of chicks are the best. All you have to do is show up. I had sex with my girl in acid once and it was pretty weird. After a while I couldn't really see anything and I could only really feel vibrating. We were both tripped out about that experience and that's when I knew I was in love with her. She left me recently though. LOL. 
Comma I had sex with my girl and acid once. Hardcore. It all started on a bus. One afternoon around 2pm I was two stops into my normal commute home and saw him for the first time. He was the most breathtakingly beautiful man I had ever seen. Black curls perfectly framing his face where his eyes shone like two blue oceans. He sat adjacent to me and I could feel my whole world suddenly shift. We snuck glances and smiles at each other but both were too afraid to say anything. This pattern continued twice a day for 3 weeks until one morning at 5.40am. Instead of sitting adjacent to me he sat right next to me. He extended his hand and introduced myself. My heart was beating a million beats a minute. I gave him my name and we spent the bus ride chatting. He walked me to my work and asked for my number and when he hugged me goodbye it felt perfectly reasonable to kiss him. We had our first date that afternoon and it was like we had known each other our whole lives. We spent every waking moment together and after 6 days of pure bliss and on the morning of the first night he had stayed over. He propped himself up over myself and looked at me very seriously. I think I'm in love with you. He said. A few seconds of thinking and studying my sleepy face. He blurted out yup. Definitely in love with you. Three months later he got a job offer in Singapore and two weeks before he was due to leave he proposed to me. Of course I said yes. Three months of long distance and I uprooted my life and joined him there. We have since moved countries again, had an interstate move and he joined the air force prompting more long distance. Four years and a marriage later and we are more in love than ever. Frick twice a day. Tell each other we love each other at every second we get and cannot be in same space without being intertwined in each other's arms. There's no other way to put it. We are soulmates. Love at first sight really does exist. It all started on a bus. Upvoted just for this. Because I want to believe. This might not be what you're looking for. For every night I spend with my boyfriend is great. We have sex. That's great. And then afterward, we just collapse into each other. Whatever position it is seems to be blissfully comfortable. We'll talk a little, about nothing in particular and just sink into sleep. Holding each other after sex and as we're cuddling is undoubtedly the best feeling in the world for me. I feel addicted to it, to the comfort and safety and being utterly relaxed. That's what what I have with my girlfriend. Waking up to her on the left and Ralph the cat on the right is up there for the best feeling in life. A year ago, I met this pretty great guy at work. He's 9 years older than me, but we had this great banter going on and were really great friends. He got me into listening to music that I wouldn't consider my taste at all and the same with movies and TV shows. One day I just decided to go for it and kiss him. Totally rejected me and didn't kiss me back. I was crushed. Later on he said that I caught him off guard and he'll make up for it. He did. Let me tell you that kiss was amazing. I've never been kissed with that kind of passion before. We've been seeing each other every weekend since we don't live that close. I've tried to end it with him because sometimes it terrifies me how much I genuinely care for him. But we are both miserable when that happens. We have this great connection that I'm scared to lose. He is definitely my one. I'm scared to lose this relationship. I know. I'll dump him. That'll show me. I met her my first day of university, and I couldn't take my eyes off her. I didn't know what it was but I was drawn to her and I made every excuse to be near her. I spent 3 years spending almost every day with her. The tension between us was like electricity. I didn't know how to act because I had never been in love with another girl before. I still fantasize about the moment we finally kissed. She initiated it. It was the most intense feeling of ecstasy I have ever felt. I don't know if I will ever feel it again. I was being kissed by the person I thought would be an unrequited love forever the kind of thing that would only happen in my dreams. Unfortunately, certain things out of my control got in the way of us being together properly. She will always be the one that got away. I met a girl last summer when I joined with a new group of friends. At first I didn't think much of her. Pretty cute, but overall unremarkable. However, after time passed I became very much enthralled by her. Everything about her. How she looked, her interests, music tastes. Every aspect of her seemed perfect to me. We had instant chemistry due to us both being giant nerds. I'm usually very introverted and shy but she brought something out in me that I had never seen before. We ended up getting together at the very end of summer and the romantic connection seemed extremely real and intense. Everything. 
talking to her late at night, driving with her, cuddling, kissing her, she was all that I wanted of a girl, soon enough she said I love you and I said it back, so happy that my feelings were reciprocated, the sound of her voice, her touch, even her presence in the room would made me feel happy and warm inside, I wanted her to be the only person that I ever dated, and she said the same thing, we dreamed of moving to Denmark together and being in love for the rest of our life, however, after a little bit, she became overwhelmed with stress from work and school and left me, and now, she hates me and I have no idea what I did to warrant that, the fact that we aren't together hurts me enough but the fact that we can't even be friends is what really kills me, I'm still in love with her and I'm afraid that I'll never find anyone that has what she had, now, I'm afraid to talk to her or even see her in public. I feel personally attacked by the ending. I met him at a Christmas party in 2015, that a mutual friend had invited us to. We hit it off almost instantly, long, wide ranging conversation that we were both genuinely engaged in. Unfortunately for me, she was clearly there with some other guy, the disappointment I felt was familiar, the whole why do I keep doing this to myself, yet somehow different at the same time. A few weeks later, I was at a lecture event at the local planetarium when I saw a woman walk in, accompanied by some guy, who thought I recognized but couldn't place. I didn't interact with her at all, but don't forget about this one. The next week, I auditioned for an a cappella group, nailed the audition. Guess who happened to be on the audition committee? So I started going to rehearsals, of course, and we officially connected. In early February our mutual friend had a few people over at her place for a casual jam session. M and I were there, talking about whatever, when she mentioned the planetarium lecture. I don't remember much else about the rest of the evening, or anybody else who was there, because M and I were in our own world. She invited me over to her place the following weekend. I made a move, and kicked off what may very well be the best month of my life. Long, deep, even some difficult conversations, dates multiple times a week, and probably more sex than I'd had with all of my previous partners combined, not to mention her willingness to teach me plenty about it. The connection was obvious, deep, and mutual in a way I had never experienced. I was convinced we were building a solid foundation for the last relationship I'd ever have. And it all came crashing down one Sunday morning as we lay in her bed. In mid-March 2016, I've gone on maybe two or three dates since then, all with different women. Nothing has come close to what I had with him, and I probably still haven't gotten over her. I can't shake the feeling that I might never truly get over her. Guy I had just met, friend of a friend of friend. I really wanted to get laid but wasn't considering him for the job. At first, when Se started making out I could tell from the first second we had amazing chemistry. I can still feel it if I think about it. We ended up having sex, and it was just wow. Ro, I know he felt the same about it, because he looked at me in the eyes at one point and said where did you come from? We didn't exchange numbers. We live in different cities and I just know his last name, but still get wet when I think about it. My current boyfriend. We go to bed around 5am every morning because we're night shift workers. You can find us in bed around 4am doing one of two rituals. Talking and joking. Or having hot, sweaty, amazing sex. He and I have sex almost every day. And good sex. Like I kind of know how they like it but also am exploring other things we may like kind of good sex. We're both extremely attracted to each other. But on the other hand, he is also my best friend. One morning we were talking for like 30 minutes about dragon tails. We can have a conversation about anything. He'll annoy the frick out of me. Too. But in the best way. Like a form of flirting. Wet willies. The jeez. Towel snaps. Putting his finger in my nose. Smacking my butt so hard I yelp. Ect. I ask him all the time why are you being like that and his answer is because I'm really good at making you smile. He's right. He really is just really good at making me smile. He annoys me to no end but I never actually feel annoyed. I feel loved. He can also be very sweet despite being a very emotionally closed guy. We were looking into the claw machine at Walmart and I said I like that fox he replied with I like that fox. And when I turned to look he was pointing at me and it made me absolutely melt. This is by far the strongest bond I've ever had with a person and I hope it never ends. I love you, babe. 
comma he replied with I like that fox, and when I turned to look he was pointing at me. Wow I'm falling for him. That was smooth as heck. We met via an online community dedicated to her pastime we're both heavily into. I could tell we'd get on brilliantly IRL and we always made each other laugh. We started talking on MSN. Because that was the thing back then. He was a student and I worked weird shifts so some days we'd be able to just sit and chat for 7 or 8 hours straight. But we never ran out of things to talk about, never stopped making each other laugh and we had so many inside jokes it was almost as if we had our own language. Anyone who overheard us talking would have no idea what we were on about. He'd recently come out of his first proper relationship and wasn't planning to be with anyone else, but ended up on a date with me just a few days after we started talking. We were saying I love yous less than a week later and it didn't feel weird at all. Three of our friends said completely independently of each other that we were like one mind and two bodies. He used to say being with me was like being in a room with a better looking version of myself. Even years after he broke up with me and had been seeing someone else for ages he still said I've never felt a connection with anyone else like the one I've had with you. We never really stopped loving each other but things didn't work out. When he broke up with me we both cried for ages. It was the worst and the best thing that ever happened to me, because I worked so dang hard trying to figure out what I did to drive him away and to improve myself so he'd take me back. That after a while I found I was working on myself for me and not for him. I sorted out a ton of emotional and social problems I had as a result of childhood abuse. I'd never been able to make a relationship work as a result of those issues. But after working hard on them I never had that problem again. If I hadn't been so desperate to fix myself to win back the man of my dreams, I would probably still be flitting from relationship to relationship perpetually trying to patch up a broken heart. Instead I'm happily married to someone I've never been terrified of losing like I was with that guy, because we're so comfortable and content together. I was kinda scared how much he was able to read my actions. He knew instantly if I was only pretending to be happy or interested and always was able to relate so much to me. It's really irritating if someone knows you so well after a few weeks that it feels like he or she is reading your mind. Drunken college days, met this girl at a lingerie party, flirting all night. She had black and red on and made it look too frickin good. She pulls me out into the stairwell by the elevators and just starts giving me head. People coming off the elevator every 2 minutes and she would just stand up and leave me with just a hard on hanging out in the open. Cover myself up people would disperse and she would go at it again. She was obsessed with doing things in public. We fricked all over that town. Rooftops. Sneaking into people's backyards to frick on trampolines or in their pools. On the 50 yard line at the D1 college football stadium in town. Both malls that were in town. Changing rooms. Dugouts. When it was raining on the hood of my car in a parking lot. Some people you just click with with positions and vibes. She was bad as all heck. She moved to Florida to live with her mom after school and she models there now. We only got caught three times and never got in trouble fortunately. When it was raining on the hood of my car in a parking lot. NNNNGGGGG. Oh I need this in my life. Thanks. We felt indescribable bliss from the get go before ever having seen each other or hearing the other's voice. We Raoul played through nothing but text for months and only spoke to each other in character for that time. When the barrier of acting was broken and we started to talk. First, the floodgates opened and we began a long distance relationship over Skype. USA to England. We maintained this with absurd ease. Having connected calls that would last days, provided both internet connections cooperated. I changed my sleep schedule to sleep when she did. After about a year of being together long distance I visited England for the 6 months I could legally do so as a tourist. Exhausted after the travel and being detained after a misunderstanding with customs. She's driving us to her home and nearly runs into someone on a motorcycle. She said she kept looking over at me while she was driving. From then on everything was about as perfect as a relationship could be. I felt at home. She improved my life in every way and our experience felt like a perfect partnership. We'd go on for 5 years in total with 2 more visits of 6 months on my part and 2 visits to the US on hers. Just when things were beginning to look like I could permanently immigrate cracks began to show. 
Her ideas on what she wanted from life had apparently changed and she'd unfortunately kept this from me. I'd been dealing with having little to no contact from her over Skype for months. Things came to a head in one dramatic and awful Skype call where she explained that she didn't want to be with me anymore and had little to say to me other than that. All in all there is a certain kind of sick feeling that accompanies being so out of the loop that you can't anticipate your own relationship ending. When the last memories that you have are all good and upon reflection of the entire relationship. Very few if any bad times were ever had. And so this is the way that things end because you grew apart. Not with a gradual erosion. Not with arguments and fights and awful trauma leading up to it. No. They ended with all the power in the situation given over to the one who simply changed their mind. Today I try not to be bitter about the experience and I am truly thankful for the life I had with her while I did. It does unfortunately give me ammunition to doubt others. That there is little security even when things seem to be going very well. Other people can walk out of your life whenever they want to. Comma that there is little security even when things seem to be going very well. Other people can walk out of your life whenever they want to. Having been someone who left, this hurts to read because it is so true. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.